So today, talking about trust and uh, the key endpoint data that exists out there and uh, what is happening in the world, why is trust and, and, and what is trust at the end of the day and why is it declining and diminishing? So it's a very key and important question and we've had this accelerate due to the pandemic, we, the mobility of the workforce, the capability to work from any, everywhere. We've had uh, a lot of movement of clients client computing to move out into the decentralized world, either people working in, in, in hubs away from the corporate office because of the pandemic or moving to working from home, which is the more common side of things. Um, this has resulted in people moving to their own Wi-Fi networks at home, which uh, guarantees cannot be uh, um, given on, on the, the security of those, those networks. And a lot of people work from remote sites, from the mug and bean, from uh, the local garage while they're having their car washed on open Wi-Fi networks, which is certainly an issue and a place where uh, data can be, uh, you know, uh, the virus way, viruses, ransomware, malware can be pushed into uh, computers over open networks and in, uh, in clients uh, are becoming more and more and more of the tool of the future. Cyber criminality is on the rise. Everybody has seen it around at the moment. Ransomware, uh, we've seen just in the last while, our, uh, our ports have been uh, substantially disabled through a ransomware attack into the transnet space. So we've seen several uh, security companies and we've seen lots of small companies being hit by ransomware and that excludes individuals as well who are getting hit on a regular basis. So there's a climate and there is an environment where trust is declining all the time. The biggest point in this would probably be the exponential client growth. And this is because the way the world has changed. Our way of work has fundamentally changed over the last two years and um, it's going to go back to some level of normality, but it's never, ever going to get back to what it was before. There are more and more devices out there, more and more people working remotely, using their own device at home or using a, a company device uh, on their home network. IDC, to quote an IDC figure here, in the last quarter of 2020, PC sales were up at 13.1% in the last quarter of 2020. Just think about that number, and the previous quarters were all raising number, rising numbers as well, but just think about that number where this has traditionally been a flat line that has grown by 1% maybe, or it has shrunk by 1%, but it, for the last 10 years has been pretty much a flat line. In the last year, we've seen phenomenal growth in the space. And go and try and buy 20 PCs for your business today. The stock is so limited. There's also been that's driving this growth is fiber to the home. It's widespread. It's easy to get onto. It's affordable. And this brings a whole lot of complexity in as well, where people that are working at home are sitting on a Zoom meeting, but at the same time, they're downloading or streaming uh, data on the same connection. Um, this is typically data coming in from the outside is where your threats, your ransomware threats, your malware, your key loggers, this is typically where these type of things will reside. And it is so easy and uh, it really, really happens fast uh, over, over your fiber networks and people don't even notice it. So security and your traditional security uh, team, they've got an upward, upward, uh, uphill battle. It's, it's like putting toothpaste back in the tube, all right? Uh, it's something that's not easy to go and try and secure every single endpoint device out there, educate the users, ensure that the networks they work in on are safe. Um, this, this is crazy. And to go and try and push software to each and every single PC out there, which has an overhead, which may result in having to have memory upgrades, may slow the PC down, may hinder productivity. Many people are, uh, are, are very hesitant to run heavy sort of security software on their endpoint devices. Um, and, you know, you could go the whole route where you go and you put zero trust in place. This is not great for productivity. It's been proven statistically. And um, the, the, the data that's available is saying 
a zero trust route where you lock everybody out, where they work through a, 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 a very narrow portal. Everything is done um, on virtual desktops, sitting inside the data center. It's great for security. It's not great for staff morale. It's not great for creativity. And it's really not great for productivity. And it kind of makes people feel uh, claustrophobic in the IT space. You would have to ban, bring your own devices. Um, and the data is there. It's saying the creativity and productivity flows when people are comfortable using the tools that they have. So you get many, many, many people out there that maybe issued a PC but like to use their Mac. And uh, you have to be able to cater for this. You, if you close this type of thing down, once again, it becomes, it becomes that problem of stifling the creativity and the productivity. Your VPN, your traditional VPNs, they, they just didn't cater for the, the volume of work. They, they're not designed. They're there as a portal. They're there as a capability to drill into your system. And, you know, the, the VPNs might be secure, but what else is happening over that fiber link? So you might be, somebody might be working safely over a VPN, but all of this stuff is downloading to the PC. And at some stage, somebody's going to work out a way on how to get into your system. So the trust is continually diminishing, and it's a very, very hard thing to get a grip on and say, okay, we can get this and rebuild the trust because it's a moving target. So ransomware is probably the biggest single threat that we've seen out there at the moment. And it's, 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 it's prevalent. In South Africa, we are seeing many, many organizations that have been hammered by ransomware. So think about it. It's not a case of if you get hit by ransomware, it really, really is a case of when are you going to hit. The end users on the open Wi-Fi networks, as I've spoken to, the new way of work, being able to work anywhere. These are the type of things that are make it very, very easy for ransomware to be inserted into data that exists on endpoint devices. This data eventually ends up somewhere in your data center, on your SharePoint, on file shares, potentially in uh, part of your cloud. Uh, but there is some way that it will always end up inside your data center. And these end users are being really they've been targeted and they're easy targets. In South Africa, in 2020, 24% of businesses reported, okay, in the survey that they had had a ransomware attack. Now that's 24% of people that are willing to speak about it, okay. Personally, I believe that number is much higher because there's a lot of companies that are quietly getting on with it, getting past it and putting in measures. And they're not reporting the fact that they have had a ransomware attack. And every business is at risk. If we look at the type of organizations that have been recently attacked in South Africa, there's uh, the public sector, there's the private sector, there's large blue chips, and there's very small companies. And this is not something that's saying, yes, the big companies will pay us a million dollars to get their data back, because um, small companies are also bound by data. It's an, I, it's an asset. It's in the, that IP, a lot of companies just live on what the, the, the value of their IP. So every business is at risk. It doesn't matter what size you are, what sector you are in the business, you are a risk. If you are data dependent in some way or another, you are a target for a cyber criminal. So what do you do? How, how do you stop this? How do you improve trust? How do you stop the endpoint device being a threat to your organization? But you still want to keep productivity going. You still want to keep creativity there. You don't want your employees to feel as if they're being stifled. You don't want your employees to feel that, you know, big brother's always watching over their shoulder all the time. You know, there are certain organizations that deal with state secrets and, and, and uh, really sensitive information. And of course, there's horses for courses. And there are certain um, environments where you have to implement a zero trust policy. But if you want to get the most out of your workforce, you need to have some type of a balance in your environment. So what should you do? And, you know, it's very, it's very uh, simple. And this slide says it all. You've got to be prepared. Now, how do you prepare? Well, you've got to make that decision as to how are you going to secure the endpoint device? Are you going to take it to the nth degree? Are you really going to go deep? Are you really going to make it sort of a zero trust platform where you can't even insert a 
a, um, a memory stick or any type of external device other than a mouse and a keyboard. Um, you know, from, from the uh, perspective of going to the absolute zero trust side to you've got to have some level of protection on the endpoint device. However, that's a cost. If you're going to go and start pushing software that is quite heavy, that is going to scan everything as it comes in, as it goes out, as it sits there, as it changes, that is something that is, is going to use up a lot of machine resources. And you're going to probably be in for a memory upgrade, potentially a CPU upgrade on, on, on desktops, uh, or both. So you've got to be prepared that you secure the endpoint device as best as you possibly can, that you create that filter of 90 to 95% of everything is filtered and cleared at the endpoint device before any data comes back into your data center. You also scan and watch that data as it comes back into your data center, but you've also then got to make sure that that data when it comes into the data center is in a format and in a place where you can manage it and you can imagine, you can, ima you can manage any events that occur related to that data. So, how do you prepare for the data center side? The endpoint is, is really very much uh, ransom scan, uh, ransomware scanning, virus scanning, malware scanning, picking up all of that type of thing and looking for changes. Also looking for runaway processes on your network that seem to be trying to bombard your system with penetration attempts or trying to push large amounts of data all over the place through your corporate network. Um, those are the type of things that externally that you can do. But once this data gets inside your organization and it's sitting in SharePoint or it's sitting on file shares, what do you need to do? You need to ensure that you have a golden copy of all of your data. External data may be coming in and there may be stuff embedded in it because you don't have that full 100% control that uh, uh, certain companies would have, but not every company is going to be able to afford it and not every company is going to want to implement it. So you've got to have that golden copy of your data. You've got to make sure that that data is air gapped from the rest of your system. You've got to make sure that there's a copy of it that you can always go back to that is uh, auditable. Um, it's in an immutable format, can't be changed in any way. And you've got to continuously be scanning that data. You don't know where that came from. It's not a trusted source, even though these are people that are working for you, system machines and systems that are attached to your network, you cannot trust them. And this is all where the diminishing trust comes in. So you've got to continually analyze that data that has come from an external source, use artificial intelligence, machine learning, and you've got to nail that down. You've got to have cyber recovery added to your business continuity plan or process. And you've also got to conform to local and global risk and compliance standards. You've got to make sure whatever you do, that golden copy of data is always going to be safe and and it's always going to comply to standards where you can go back to audit and say, that is the single version of the truth. But I think most importantly, the single block that's important on this slide is you've got to activate the right teams. This is no longer just the responsibility of your security team. This is the responsibility of security, of IT, of your management uh, team, your line of business silos, and also most importantly, you're, you've got to have executive buy-in. You've got to have buying at the boardroom level and there's got to be ownership there as to how much money do you put into this? Where do you stop? Where do you cre uh, create that, um, that divide between total control and productivity? And then how do you handle a cyber attack? Do you report it widely? Do you become a co-conspirator or a, a co-offender with a cyber criminal and pay the ransom? You know, it's a case of you damned if you do, you damned if you don't, because if you report it, people are going to question your, your, your um, processes and procedures in place for protecting their data. Uh, if you don't report it and you get found out, the, the reputational damage you're going to suffer either way is a case of being damned if you do, damned if you don't. So this is something that's got to flow right the way through the business, right the way through your business continuity plan, and it's got to be added to all of your data that is essential to you running your business, that IP that lifeblood of your business, that is what you've got to go and secure by having that golden copy of your data sitting inside your data center. So there, short and sweet. Thank you, folks.
Um, I hope that's giving you some food for thought. There's uh, information that you can contact me on. There's uh, numerous ways to get hold of me. And uh, I thank you for your time. Thank you, Mike. Um, that was a really, a, a really, I, I, a very to the point and very decent presentation in terms of getting, you know, getting a very strong message across and simplifying, you know, a very complex area. Uh, just thinking of some of the leaks we've noticed lately, the leaks of in the rugby, for instance, a little while ago, um, where straight out of the you know stuff that's been recorded and leaked onto the into the into the bigger system. Uh, the, the leaks from the government on the port authorities, for instance, and then also some of the stuff re recently, even like stay like institutions which you wouldn't think would be very you know targeted, like uh, the blood transfusion services and so on, where these guys are also getting out to ransom, if you like, in some cases, or being hacked, and you know having to take a, a very very hard, long hard look at what their security infrastructure looks like. I think your, your points about the mixed traffic coming in over the VPNs and that, and how stuff gets inserted there surreptitiously, very, very key point. And I don't think a lot of us think about that. And you know the, the, the concept of all the risk that, that comes up out of all of this. There's financial risk to your organization. There's, there's going to be operational risk of re restarting everything and, and fixing what was broken. And then there's obviously the big one, which is reputational risk. So, you know, absolutely, Mike, and your, your point of simplification and having a golden copy is very, very well made. Mike, I've been watching the questions coming in, and I do invite the, uh, in, the attendees to, to continue joining the discussion. Please post your questions on the Q&A box. There is a chance to win a, an e-gift voucher um, for the best questions. And one of the first questions that has come in is, um, how deep do you take the security of endpoints? Quite a big question, a wide question, but Mike, if you can give us some light on, throw some light on the subject here. Well, yeah, Mark, in the presentation, I alluded to it, you know, you can go to the real hardcore zero trust um, where a person gets a token or gets an app on their phone, they get a key, they log in, they work through a very narrow portal and they work on virtual desktop infrastructure on a server inside the data center. Um, but this is, totally limited. Uh, a person cannot go and do some research, cut and paste from uh, a Google document, do anything like that. This is so restrictive. Um, so you can go down to that nth degree. It does cost a lot of money. It does cost a lot in productivity. Mm. Um, and, you know, you, you said you know, there's the, those risks. Um, and one of the key risks as well is, you know, your, your people as much as your data or the lifeblood of your company and you've got to have happy employees uh, and if if you're so restrictive that make it difficult for them to work on their endpoint devices they get lazy they get sloppy about it and that's where your problems come in you've also then got to take the approach of saying we'll do the best we can at the end there and then what we'll do when it's once it's in our data center we will always operate on the basis that something could have got through so we'll no longer be looking outwards, we'll be looking inwards. So how deep do you take it? You've got to try your best to protect and filter as much as you possibly can from the endpoint devices. And you've got to then also make sure that anything that gets through, if it does create mayhem or havoc inside your organization, you are in a position to be able to go back to before the mayhem and the havoc started. So how deep do you take it? I think it's got to be built in 100% to your business continuity plan. It has to be part of your business resumption plan, the business continuity continuum of backup and recovery, of disaster recovery, and now you've got to have that component of cyber recovery on it. You cannot use your traditional uh, business continuity components. They are there for different things, uh, for, for uh, data corruption, damage, for a physical event, mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. disaster recovery, and cyber recovery is there for a criminal, a criminal event. So you've got to, you, this is something you can't do piecemeal. You've got to take it as deep as you possibly can at the endpoint, as well as where that data comes back to. No, thanks, Mike. As you know, I think that you've actually segued very well into the next question that's come in now. Um, and that question is, and it refers to that, you know, where do you, uh, not only how deep you go, but how wide do you go? And the question is, what is more important, securing the endpoint or the data center IP? Very good question. Yes, and that's how wide do you go? I mean, 
we see in the Nordic companies that are actually putting a value to data. And they're putting mm. that on their balance sheet. They also put in a value of to, to their people and they're putting that on their balance sheet. So these two things are very tied uh, together. It's a, it's a very gray area and people are starting to get to grips on the value of data and the value of people. So how wide do you take it? You've got to have that IP that exists out there. People create stuff. They do stuff on their own time. Um, you've got to make sure that any data, any sort of IP that's created, there, any sort of uh, make it easy for people to be creative, easy to develop, easy to do things. So you've got to take this as wide as you possibly can that you catch all components and all facets of data uh, that are out there. And you've got to make sure that uh, you, you're able to have a program that encourages this, but at the same time, the dangers that will lurk inside that type of data have to be covered. So yes, you, you've got to uh, allow people to, to work freely, to bring their own devices, to uh, be comfortable at work, to be creative and, product, and, 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 and to allow productivity to thrive and make them feel valued. Um, and then on the other side, that data has a value. You've got to treat that as your lifeblood because we see that any company that gets hacked and their data is uh, somehow encrypted, their capability to recover, their, their backup software, their backup catalog is destroyed. When those type of things are taken away, these companies turn around and say, oh, what do we do? We can't function. Mm. So protecting your data, okay, should be one of the most important things with inside any organization. Um, it should be key to any type of audit process. Um, you should be looking at what global standards are. And then you should be saying, I need to keep that golden copy of data somewhere where nobody can get to it. Yes, it's a cost, but when, and not if, when I get hacked, I've got that golden copy of data I can go back to and allow my business to recover. No, great points, Mike. Um, you know, I think your point about not stifling innovation and yet making a very secure environment right from the end point, right through to the you know, depths of the data center. Um, that, that, that's got to be a key priority for any, any, any CIO or IT manager, but also at, uh, at board level where the, the, the security issues are, are, are absolutely paramount. But nowadays we tend to be very um, focused on business, but business nowadays is very much driven digitally. So I think your points are very well made. Mike, I just want to thank you for your time. Appreciate it. It's a great presentation. Thank you for taking the questions as well. And uh, yeah, it was good, really good to have a chat. Yeah, thank you, Mark. And uh, you know, it's great. Always, always love the and thrilled to participate in the, the IDC events. And uh, you know, this last one, it's all about balance. It's creating that balance between people, data, and what do you need for your business to thrive? Thanks, Mark. Excellent. I really had a great time.